So here we are in the room that's gonna be my new print farm. Now I've currently got 25 printers that I'm gonna put in this space, but I fully anticipate that to grow, which means I need to plan accordingly. And for me, that starts with addressing power in the space. Now when I moved into this room, there were three 110 circuits and two 220 circuits. But based on my projected max printer capacity of 75 printers, I calculated that I'm gonna need 11 110 circuits. So I hired a commercial electrician to repurpose some of the 220 circuits that were in here, as well as pull in power from other areas of the building and put boxes strategically on the walls so that all those banks of printers can plug into them. Now for right now, I run all Prusa Mark III S pluses, which at peak pull maybe 300 watts, but typically run anywhere from 60 to 100 watts. So it's not that any one printer pulls a ton of power, but when you get 25 of them in a small area, that's where you run into some problems. Now I've got a whole video where I set up a nine printer farm at my house, where I talk about power consumption and running all these printers through a UPS. Well, I'm gonna do essentially the same thing here. I'm gonna run three printers through one UPS and then have two UPSs plug into one circuit. So in essence, I've got six printers running on each circuit. Now, technically, a circuit can comfortably handle a little bit more than six printers, which is why 11 circuits could ultimately work for 75 printers. So now that I've got all my necessary circuits in place, the next step is to add some racking. Also, I don't know if the audio is picking it up, but I've got an active roof leak currently dripping into this trash can. And as we all know, water and electronics are not great matches. So I've got to get this addressed before moving any printers in here. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get those racks in here. And the first step of that process is, of course, to put them together. In my experience, the sweet spot as far as sizing for these racks is a 24 inch depth, a six foot height and a six foot width. That lets you pretty comfortably get six printers on three levels. I also really like this heavy duty racking versus some of the cheaper stuff that you can buy, especially in the box stores. Mostly because in my experience, I think it cuts down on vibration quite a bit. Now what's both a blessing and a curse in this print farm room is the ductless mini split. That's gonna allow me to cool this room because a bunch of printers in one area tends to make it warmer, but it also means I can't really place anything in front of the mini split and have to kind of place the racks accordingly. So I think underneath the mini split, I'll have kind of a filament storage area so that I don't have any cold air blowing directly on a printer because that will definitely affect your print quality and or cause issues. And this, at least for now, is the final product. So you can see on the left side, I've got two full racks. That's gonna be 18 printers. I've got this low section for filament storage. And then I've got another full rack here on the right. Now, originally my plan was to have two full racks on each side of the mini split, but because the mini split is not perfectly centered, the spacing actually doesn't work out. So the new plan is to have one rack here and then have another full rack on this wall, which I'll have to tie into some of those outlets because again, I plan for everything to be over there. And then the phase three expansion, would be another rack on this wall, which again, I've already got outlets for. Now when it comes to the other end of the room, I've got a window that's kind of now in the way. I could put a low rack here, maybe with two rows of printers, and then I can fit another full rack here on this wall. And after I'm seeing how everything's gonna fit in the space, the max printers that I can see in here now is more like 66 rather than 75, which is still 40 more than I have now. So plenty of room for expansion, but not quite as much as I thought. And the next step is the actual shelf material. Now the wire shelves that come with the racks, those aren't gonna work. And in my previous build, I used a sheet of three quarter inch plywood, which worked pretty good. But I think for this one, I'm gonna try MDF because I think MDF is actually gonna help dampen some of the vibration, which becomes a concern when you connect this many printers on one structure. And speaking of vibration, one way I tried to counteract that at my last print farm was to actually place every printer on a cement paper, which is then placed on a piece of foam. The idea there is that you've increased the mass of the printer and created almost a dampening pad underneath it so that it should isolate from all the other printers. Now that bank of nine printers has been running around the clock for many months now without any issues, but I'm also inadvertently running a parallel test without the isolation blocks. You see across the basement, I actually have another rack set up with nine more printers and I didn't have time to do the whole isolation isolation thing, so every one of those is just sitting on a piece of plywood. And there really hasn't been any issues, so I'm not totally sold on the need for the cement paver. Now, I already mentioned I'm gonna use MDF for the shelf material itself, but what I'm also gonna do is not create one continuous shelf of MDF, but actually cut it up into three sections, and each of these sections is gonna house one printer. The thought here for me is that that should also help isolate each printer, I'm then gonna take each one of those individual MDF panels and apply a strip of foam on each end where it's actually gonna rest on the shelf. I think that that's gonna really add some more dampening and isolate each printer from itself. Again, I know that a continuous strip of plywood or MDF is gonna work, so individual panels should definitely work, and my thought is that it should be that much better with those strips of foam underneath.
All right, so we've got this entire rack done and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think these individual pads for the printers is gonna work really well. And you can see here just how much they can move independently from each other. Again, I don't know if it's totally necessary, but it's certainly not gonna hurt anything. All right, so the next step is obviously to add the printers. But before we do that, I'm gonna start adding the lights. And for the lights themselves, I'm gonna go with the tried and true Barina four foot LED fixtures. I've used these a ton in the past. I'll link them down below if you wanna check them out, but I think they make a great light. They are extremely easy to install. You just need to attach two of these metal clips that the light then snaps into. And then you can power each light individually by plugging into either end or link up to six together for one continuous circuit. And with the lights taken care of, I can now turn my attention to moving the printers. I actually held on to the original boxes and packing material from these printers because I knew that this day would come, whether I was moving my business or we were moving to a new house. I figured if these printers made it halfway around the world in these boxes, surely it'd be safe for a 12 minute car ride. just took a while considering I'm doing it, you know, 25 times. But as I'm moving all this stuff in here, I can't help but think about security, which is why this video is sponsored by Eufy Security. And I wanna tell you specifically about the new Eufy Cam 3. These things are really cool. These little guys shoot in 4K Ultra HD, are totally wireless, and are solar powered. Yeah. You heard that right. This little solar cell on top of the camera will actually keep them charged indefinitely. You know, as long as you actually put it outside and not in the shade in sunlight. You see, the onboard battery is actually rated for 12 months of battery life without any solar input. How crazy is that? Now I've had other wireless outdoor cameras that uh, have a stated battery life of six months, but I was maybe lucky to get three. So even if they're half wrong and you get six months of battery, it only takes two hours of sunlight to fully recharge it. So it doesn't even matter. Now I also mentioned they shoot in 4K Ultra HD. This means you can actually read a license plate from 33 feet away or zoom in eight times to see the tiniest detail. And because the sensor is so sensitive, it can actually pick up color at night. So you can get colored night vision. I mean, come on. And there's even a built-in spotlight that will shine if it detects movement from an unfamiliar source. Unfamiliar? How would a camera know if it's familiar? Well, that brings up another amazing feature. You see, the Eufy security ecosystem is all powered by this home base, which actually has integrated self-learning AI called Bionic Mind that can learn familiar faces and detect if strangers are present. Is this how the robot apocalypse starts? Now, that might scare the crap out of some of you, but in practice, it's actually pretty useful. You can set up your system to alert you if a new face is detected, and then you can go back and actually look how many times that new face was detected, so if there's a pattern of that face showing up. My all-time favorite features is that there are no monthly fees, and installation of the outdoor cameras is predictably easy. Now, I'm choosing to place two around the entrances of my building just to keep track of people coming in and out and for deliveries that happen to show up. That way, if it happens and I'm not here, I can just open my app and either confirm delivery or check on the status of whatever's sitting outside. If you want to check out the Eufy Cam 3 or any other devices from Eufy Security, check those links down below. It is actually a super cool system. I've got peace of mind knowing that my business is secured with Eufy Security. Now, while I'm getting these printers set up and calibrated, I need to address filament because up till now I've been using one kilogram spools, but depending on what I'm printing, this means I change spools every two to three days, which is kind of annoying. So my plan has always been to go to larger spools, either three or three and a half kilograms, but that presents a problem. You see that size spool doesn't fit on the standard spool holder, but I've been kind of wanting to get away from this orientation for a while now, to be honest. So I thought that a roller setup would be the best for my situation. I just had to make 25 of them, which means printing a lot of parts, like, a lot of parts. But the good news is, is that I did find a use for that silver PLA that comes with the brand new Prusas that's been collecting dust on my shelf otherwise. And of course, I couldn't find a pre-designed roller design that I actually liked, so I just went about doing it myself. I made it really sturdy and have an interchangeable center section for different width spools. But then halfway getting those things assembled, I realized, hey dummy, you still have a ton of one kilogram spools to go through, so why not just slap on the same holders just to get up and running? And luckily they fit just barely in the shelf spacing I selected. So as a temporary measure to chew through all of the one kilogram spools I still have, that's how I'm gonna run until I make the transition to the three or three and a half kilogram spool.
Well, happy to report that the move from the basement is now complete and we're back in production mode. In total, I think we were down for about a day and a half, which really isn't terrible, but I'm glad to be back printing. And one of the last things I wanna do is add some cameras. You see, I can no longer just waltz down to the basement, check on things, or change prints. The print farm is now about 12 minutes from where I live. So being able to just pull up something on my phone, check on status, maybe any errors, is gonna be really useful. And this is where UP security comes back into play. I'm gonna use their little pan and tilt indoor cameras to keep an eye on the print farm when I'm at home. Now, because this room is kind of long and skinny, I'm actually gonna use two of these in this room, one on this side and one on the far end. Installation is incredibly easy. It takes about a minute. You can either set them on a flat surface or use the included bracket to mount them even from the ceiling, which is what I'm gonna do. You can see here, I can choose between either one of the cameras, take a look around the room, and even zoom in on a specific printer to take a look at what's going on. What's also great is because the print room is gonna be dark most of the time, especially at night while they're printing, these cameras are actually able to see in the dark, meaning I don't have to leave lights on just to use the cameras, which is kinda of nice. Now since setting everything up, I've been able to run the farm for about a week now and everything seems to be running really well. One thing I've tried to be really intentional with is workflow. Like for example, I've got this little cart that I'll drag around with me to keep the parts that I'm pulling off the printers. I also have this large trash can on wheels that I can wheel around with me as well. And this ultimately just rolls up into efficiency. It lets me tend to the farm very quickly and get on to doing other things. And those other things are getting back to what I should be doing, which is developing products and bringing new things to market. Now what I've got set up now is what I'll call phase one. There's still plenty left to improve on. For this step, my main goal was to get back into production. But I'm curious to know what you think. What questions do you have? What things did I not answer? What do you want to see in the future? Let me know down in the comments. But as you can imagine, printing the parts is just the start. How do you prep the parts? How do you package the parts? How do you ship the parts? So a lot of stuff has been going on in the background as far as setting this whole system up. And you can see it's very much still a work in progress. I'll share more of that in a future video. And one more thing before we go. I obviously have Prusas, right? I've got 25 of them. I think they're a great workhorse printer. But does that mean that's all I'm ever going to have or will continue to buy? I don't know, I'm always open to new ideas. But before you ender bros, jump in the comments, I am not going to enders, okay? And if you're a proponent for enders in a print farm, you've never run a print farm. But other contenders on the market, like the Bamboo Labs, or even a totally different technology, like HP Multijet Fusion, I am not only open to all of it, I'm actively investigating it. So more to come on that as well. Thanks for watching, I appreciate all of you. See ya.